the story, I guess, from the FBI's would be also that it is, um, you know, it, it's intentional. Um, but there's vi- there was video involved. And that's one of the things that was really fascinating. When they released video, you were able to say, wait a minute, and find some weird stuff about that. Tell us about that. Sure. So Planned Parenthood security video captured the whole thing. And the Knoxville Fire Department had that within days of the arson. We have an analogy to FOIA in Tennessee where you can request public records. So we requested records from the fire department and and they turned over this video to us. And LifeSite News was very good to help us put it together into a coherent story. Whenever you get security video, there's a lot of dead, a lot of dead time. But you can see everything. You can see the arsonist arrive on the property. You can see his truck. His truck had one headlight out. It was a red GMC Sierra uh, manufactured sometime in the uh, mid 2000s. You see him arrive on the property. At first he parks away from the property and just walks around the property. Everything is in silhouette. So you don't really get a good picture of him but you can see you know, his size and shape and he walks around the property and then he pulls his truck up into the alley behind the property. And you can you can see the truck, you can see the headlight out. He gets out of the truck. Um, he leaves the view of the camera. And we know from the Knoxville Fire Department's forensic investigation that he entered the building at that point. And the only way he could get in was through the window. So because it was under construction, um, the new doors were blocked with plywood and the doors from the original structure were all locked, okay? But it was under construction and the windows were only covered with plastic. And so the Knoxville Fire Department believed that's how he got into the building. So he cut the plastic, uh, got into the building, poured gasoline around. Now this is not on the video. So the video is only from outside the building, but we know from the Knoxville Fire Department investigation, he got in the building He went into one of the new rear exam rooms, poured gasoline all around, lit the fire and got out of the building. So you could see him running away from the building, getting back into the truck and driving away. The whole thing was captured on video. So that's how they knew right away that it was an arson. You see the guy do it. Uh, You can see the explosion on the screen. It's, It's really quite dramatic. Well, in the meantime, I had been writing these articles all along for LifeSite News each time we learned something significant. And uh, Mark Reno's daughter got in touch with me and she said, hey, I'd like to meet with you. And she provided me with photographs that we could put side by side with the arsonist captured by the video. And it's not the same person. This arsonist Mm. was very thin, very tall, very lanky. He had to be uh, pretty agile to get into these windows. They were not floor level windows. They were up off the ground, probably four feet. And you look at the profile picture of Mark Reno, uh, who was much heavier uh, than this guy. And it's just not the same person. Nobody who looks at these two pictures side by side thinks it's the same person. And the Knoxville Fire Department had dismissed him as a suspect. Uh, they they thought, you know, he had, he had a similar truck to the arsonist. They thought it might have been him. Then they dismissed him. So they knew it wasn't him. Hi, everyone. This is John Henry Weston for LifeSite News. We hope you found this video insightful. For more content like this, be sure to check out the links in the description below. You can also follow us on social media to stay updated on the latest news concerning life, faith, family, and freedom. Thanks for watching, and may God bless you.